Yeah, no shit. Sure. That's without a clock. Wow. Uh, Mr. Bridges. Yes, sir. Oh. How you doing? Oh, there he is. Oh, sorry. sorry to make you wait. It's Bo Bridges, everyone. Hey, he'll be here, Anthony. What are we doing getting actual Hollywood stars on our show? <laughs> we don't know how to talk to a real Hollywood star. We get the uh, the phony types. <laughs> How you guys doing? Very good. Good. What do you got going uh, for yourself these days? Well, I'm doing Stargate. Stargate? They're, yeah. Sci-fi. The sci-fi show. They're in their ninth season, and I'm joining them as General Hank Landry. S- nine years that show's been on? Yeah. Jesus, where where's the time go? <laughs> I know. Nine seasons. And uh, now you're uh, you're joining the cast. Is it the uh, Stargate or Stargate Atlantis or Stargate CSI or... Stargate SG-1. SG-1, that's the original one. That's right. And is uh, is MacGyver still on that show? Richard came in and did uh, like a couple of scenes and, and a couple of episodes, but he's sort of, uh, you know, opting out of it. Wow, now. why would he leave? He's doing very well with well, that. Well, nine years, you know, he helped uh, create the show. And uh, I don't know, you'd have to ask Richard. Wow. Okay, yeah. put him on. <laughs> no, <laughs> not there. I, I've been a I've been a big fan for ever since the incident. Um, I, I never I didn't see it live. I mean, I was born in '68, but I got to say that's a fine film. Yeah, that was a crazy one about the the uh, subways in New York, huh? Yeah, Martin Sheen's first film. That was his actual first oh, film yeah. with Tony Masanti and uh, and Bob Bridges played the guy who got involved. All Ed right. McMahon was that Ed McMahon's only film ever. I think, Tom and I Carol and certainly Bob Carroll and Ted Mills. Only dramatic uh, forte. Now you've been you've been acting for a long time, and a friend of mine and I were talking about like a lot of the way the movies are, and it seems like like a lot of the stress is no longer put on acting because a lot of the stuff like effects and all that stuff. It, 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 a lot of this, the distress, you say? Well, uh, the the effects it seems like have kind of replaced what what used to you have, you have to act like in the sixties you had to act. Because it was nothing to cover up anything. That's why a lot of you guys from those days are, are, are great. And it seems like today, there's so many effects and other things that will just cover up for a lack of, like, you know, what would have passed back then. Oh, wow. Good well, question. Hopefully, hopefully they won't, uh, you know, where it all ends, they'll digit. I can't even pronounce the word. Digitalize us. <laughs> or, yeah, digitize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Either so one I'll is good, especially on this that. show. I'll have to get into voiceovers or something. I <laughs> You've done a lot of great work. He was in uh, Norma Ray, uh, uh, Grease Lightning. You just had a fantastic career. I mean, st- what did you start in 48? You, you was like your first role? Yeah, I think uh, around that time I was in a film called Zamba, which comes on on TV every once in a while where I was uh, chasing around in the jungle with a gorilla named Zamba. Ah, I Zamba the gorilla, old. sure. There's lots of me calling out, Zamba, Zamba. Hey. Now, obviously, you're Jeff, uh, Jeff's brother. Every role he plays lately, it just seems like he plays a complete maniac. He's nothing like that, I would hope. <laughs> no, now, my mother wouldn't like to hear you say that because you also play the President of the United States. It is. Pretty calm and collected in that one. I can't look yeah, at he him. does like those crazy guys, doesn't he? Uh, I can't look at him without thinking of the, of the remake of The Vanishing with Kiefer Sutherland. <laughs> oh, yeah. He was frightening I like that one. That was pretty bizarre. We get hit with the face and the, sh- the shovel goes into his face and all that. Yeah. Hey, have you seen uh, any of his performances from the Dinah Shore show? Mm-mm. Any of your brother's performances? No, I haven't. I remember him doing that. <laughs> yeah, we recently got a DVD, and, and it's uh, a bunch of singing performances by celebrities on the Dinah Shore show. Oh, and yeah. He must have been like 16 or 17. Right? Oh, my God. Well, I don't know. He had this big uh, head of hair and beard. I think it was during um, King Kong. Uh-huh. I've been during that one. Oh, okay. So he wasn't like a kid. No, no. But uh, it's one of those performances that are kind of like, oof. Yeah, he's gotten into uh, music quite a bit. He he came out with an album with Michael McDonald recently. Really? That he wrote a lot of the mu- Jeff wrote a lot of the music for and stuff. He's always loved music, yeah. Do you guys have any competitive stuff going? Because, I mean, uh, you know, I mean, you're both very, very famous and both very respected actors. Uh, not, not really, because... You know, uh, first of all, we both feel quite blessed and fortunate to have been able to make a living in this business, which is such a crazy biz. And uh, and also, uh, I'm a bit older than Jeff, so in a lot of ways, I because my dad was traveling a lot with work when we'd stay home as kids, I would do a lot of the father stuff with him. So I'm kind of, you know, I, I enjoy all of his successes and so forth because I taught him everything he knows. 
<laughs> well, you're also you're also very musical. I mean, uh, they, it says here in the bio that you play guitar. Um, I'm not particularly musical. Yeah, I, lo- I love music. I do. I like to I like to play it. I'm not quite like when uh, Jeff and I did the Fabulous Baker Boys together. We ah, yes. Play those of course. piano guys. Um, we played all our own piano in it, but Jeff can real. I mean, he he still can play all of Dave Grusin jazz music from that, and, and I I had to just kill myself to learn a few bars. I can like I can chord with my left hand and play melody with my right, so I'm okay at parties for an hour or so. But that's about it. Mm. Hey Bo, how's your son uh, Todd doing? We haven't heard from him in a while. <laughs> Todd. Yeah, I think you... Todd's not my son, but he he's uh, from what I understand, he's doing okay now. Todd Bridges. <laughs> yeah, but a lot of people think he's my son, but no. No, huh? No. I think that's great that you're still you're still uh, going strong in this in new thing because I, I do a little bit of acting too, although I'm not particularly uh, very good. I tend to like just make eye contact with the camera, and then the director has to go talk. <laughs> yeah, that's the first thing you don't want to do. Are, are you Meisner or Method? Can I ask you that? What Am is I that? Rich? Uh, either or Meisner or method a- actor. Um, well, my dad was my teacher, mm-hmm. and he was you know sort of a Stanislavski guy, you know the the um, Stanislavski method. So I I learned a lot of the that that path from him. Stanislavski, as yes. opposed to Boleslavski, which was another oh. method actor. Really? Now Boleslavski, geez, now you're talking. Eh? Mm-hmm. Oh my because God, we we got an anchor from CNBC in the studio today, sir. And he's boring right. the hell out of us. And uh... <laughs> yeah, Boleslavski. In, in fact, I just gave my uh, my nephew a book written by him. He was one of Stanislavski's students, and he wrote a book called "Acting: The First Six Lessons." And it's a great one. You ought to get it. It's fun. The first think? lesson is do not look into the camera. Oh, <laughs> there you go. that's what I kind of do. I just, I just, I try to like avoid all voice inflection and emotion. I figure just spit the words out quickly and then let the audience decide what I meant. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> hey, how do you, how do you feel? I mean, again, I, I mean, I, I would classify you as an absolutely real actor and, and like an old school guy. How, how do you feel about all the remakes and all that? Just the, the shit that they're throwing out at people. Well, I mean. Uh... I've certainly done my share of shite. You know, the the uh, I think the most important aspect to any any entertainment uh, that tells a story is the story itself. If it's a good one, then uh, it probably will be retold several times. You know, what, what goes through your mind when you're uh, part of a project that you just know is awful, but you're under contract and you got to you, you got to you know get it done. Well, it's odd for me. It, for me, that's never really happened because I think the whole, whole nature of what what I do, uh, being an actor, is kind of requires of you total commitment when you jump in there. And right. so by the time that the camera's rolling, I'm pretty much on board. And but aren't there times you just know, uh oh, I got myself into something here? <clears throat> no, maybe later on, you know, if you see one. It's a stinker, you know. Come on, uh, Grease Lightning. It hurts. That was a good one with uh, <laughs> Richard know, Pryor. Richard Pryor, of course. I was going to ask about that. Did yeah, you get along with Pryor? Because he legendarily gets along with no one. Dig a lot one. deeper into the craft than that one. <laughs> what, what's that? You can dig a lot deeper into the craft than that one. He says. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, that was um, Richard Pryor's first kind of main thing. Yeah, it was like a real serious role for him uh, as Wendell Scott. Uh, did you enjoy working with him, or was he brutal? No. He was wonderful in that movie. Yeah, he was just great. Okay, it's probably before he got jaded and miserable on coke. <laughs> I liked you as Warren Tucker in Sea Hunt episode Storm Train. <laughs> Don't you love Internet Movie Database? <laughs> uh, you you actually you, you were in a uh, episode of Sea Hunt with your dad. Yes, I played a jewel thief in that one. <laughs> really? Who escapes into a storm drain after I pull off the heist, and then uh, Mike Nelson, my dad dives into the sewer to save me. Ah. And that was uh me. I used to watch that as a kid all the time, see hunt. Yeah, sure. Hey Bo me too. got a question for you and, and I I bet Anthony will recall this too. Mm-hmm. It seemed like every episode at some point in Sea Hunt involved somebody getting behind your dad and cutting his ear hose. <laughs> a violent <laughs> underwater fight, his ear hose gets cut, right? That's right. Well, yeah, what was the whole storyline to that? What was your dad's character in that? Well he was like a uh I, I think he was was he a co- ex coast guard guy or something that was just sort of 
But he would just... He was like a detective, and he would go out and solve crimes on the water. Underwater he, detective. <laughs> How many underwater crimes are happening? But in doing so, he... Seems like a bad yeah, business. Was all in yeah. underwater, and he really introduced a lot of people across the country and the world uh, to underwater stuff. And, you know, he and Jacques Cousteau kind of came along at the same time. Yep. Cousteau, of course, yeah. in the scientific area, my dad. I had a I had a sea yep. I had a sea hunt uh, moment, uh, Bo. Oh, did you? What happened? Oh, I was scuba true. diving and I uh, beat up a Fren Frenchman sixty feet underwater <laughs> once. Did you pull out his arrow? <laughs> no, I just I just punched him a few times and we were wrestling and stuff in slow motion underwater. <laughs> it's a true story. It's the only way to wrestle underwater I, is slow motion. I was motion. scuba diving and this Frenchman who was just being a complete ass on the boat before we <laughs> dove. I uh, wasn't paying attention to anything. It was his first dive, and he just came down way too fast and landed on top of me. So I decided the best way to take care of this was to punch him in his face underwater. Jeez, well, Jacques Cousteau wouldn't like that very much. So we had, a kind, of air a, hose we had kind of a sea hunt, slow motion fight underwater. It was great. Excellent. I wish I could have been there. <laughs> <laughs> now, you did, uh, you did Norma Ray in 79, and uh, a great film. And uh, Ron Liebman was in that. What is Ron Liebman doing? I haven't seen Ron in a long time. He's he's a a good guy, and uh, I I actually worked again with him after that. I cast him in a movie that I directed, and uh, he was wonderful. He's he's always great when he's out there. Yeah, he did a very funny film uh, by Mad Magazine called Up the Academy. Oh, I didn't see that one. <laughs> I remember that one. Sure. So, are you looking for any young actors? Because I mean, I would definitely like to do some uh, Hollywood acting work. You know, I'd like. I, I wouldn't mind uh, considering you, but I'd like you to send me some footage of you where you could actually say something without looking into the camera. That's very important to me. See, Jimmy? Um, I don't think you have any of that. No, well, but a lot, a lot of times I like to hold the paper, but I always make sure like I'm holding a newspaper so like the audience doesn't see that I'm actually reading off the script. <laughs> I know how to hide it around the set. And, and Bo, Jim was in Spider-Man, the first one. So. Oh, yeah, I had one line in Spider-Man. Yeah. Well, what did you say? I, I well I was the pivotal turning point in the film. I was a man on the street, and they said, "What do you think of Spider-Man?" I said, "He stinks, and I don't like him." And I was uh, got a line right here. He stinks, and I don't like him. That was my line. That was the actual line from Spider-Man. Is that how you said it? Yeah. Well, I was just kind of <laughs> I was exasperated. That was me playing exasperated. So you had more on the actual take. You had more exasperation than that. Yeah, I used a little bit of spunk. I didn't even get to meet Sam Raimi. It was all his second unit shoot in Queens. Spunk, you know, spunk is, is really on the way out. <laughs> yeah. You've got to get rid of the spunk. Too. Yeah, I hear Peppy is making a comeback. Spunk Peppy is, is better, yeah. I like playing lackadaisical. Ooh, <laughs> sure. Well, Bo, uh, thank you for joining us. And what, what again, because they're, they're saying that, that we've got to get you out of here, but what is the name of the... Uh... Stargate. Stargate. Oh, no, Stargate. Like when starting and all that stuff. SG-1. SG-1. And it's going to be on uh, the, the Sci-Fi Channel, of course, Fridays at 9 p.m. We're going after the aliens before they get us. That's it. Zipping uh, through Oh, that time. little War of the Worlds tie-in. Look there at you. you. All right. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, Mr. Bridges. Good talking to you guys. Have Th a great day. You too. Bo Bridges, everyone. Bye-bye. It's a big uh, Hollywood star, that guy, right there. I think Jeff, his brother. In studio. Right. Out. Yeah. Lloyd. Dad Lloyd. How long is this? Unfortunately, Lloyd's last movie was uh, Jay Moore's Mafia. Ah. Not that I didn't enjoy Jay Moore and Mafia, Jay. Hi, Jay. <laughs> I see that sometimes in gas stations. I go stopping off at an Exxon, yeah. and I realize that there's no hole drilled in between the two booths, and I have to go in there and actually do some shopping. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll actually, uh, and if I can't meet anyone, I'll buy a movie. So uh, <laughs> Mafia is always like the one they have a bunch of uh, copies in the Exxon of, which oh, is good. Yeah, sure. It's opening up to a new market. Yeah, why not? You know, the people that need gas. Yeah, absolutely. Jeez.